Today we will look into disorder modeling in OLEX 2 and we will use this THPP example that we've used many times in the past. And this is how it is currently shipped in OLEX 2 with this very strange disorder of uh, part 0 and part 1 being this one here and part 0 and part 2 being a different chemical compound. Now the question is, is this actually correct? And we will examine this in this video. Okay, so first of all, let's refine this and we can set the refinement settings. We're going to use OLEX 2 Refine and we hit the Refine button and the refinement will start in the background. And this will also give us some Q peaks, electron density peaks that we can look at by clicking on this button here. And what we will see is that some of these peaks are on the bonds and some are not, this one here in particular. It's not a very strong peak, it's only 0 0.48 and um, this is why we have always modeled it this particular way, thinking that uh, well, there could be another position of the carbon, but it's a very weak peak. Another tool that we have got in OLEX2 is Control M, which is looking at the electron density map, and Control Q to hide the peaks again. And it turns out that this peak is actually quite visible. So the question is, could we maybe model this differently by actually having a carbon here and then that would be bound to that carbon and that carbon to that carbon and then we would actually have the same chemical compound. So if we wanted to do this, there is many different ways of doing this and I'm going to walk through some of them. So first of all, because this disorder is uh, in involving carbons and also hydrogens and the occupancies here, when we hover the mouse, we can see this is occupied, it's 83, 87, 88%. So it's quite a lot of carbon. So 88% of a hydrogen is, is quite a lot compared to like 10% of a carbon, uh, which is what this part would be here, or 12%. So what we do, we uh, press the left mouse, sorry, the left mouse and shift key, and now we select this whole disordered area, and we delete all the hydrogen atoms. So this is this uh, button here, but it also could be kill $H that would delete the hydrogens. Okay, so now we basically want to split this atom or you might want to assign this cubic as a carbon. So let's remind ourselves, so this is in part one, as you can see, and this is in part two. So this one would have to be in part two as well. So what we would type here is uh, part two and uh, I hit return and I can use alt and the backspace to reselect the current selection, the selection I had before and go name, oops, that's not name, name C. So I've now made this a carbon in part two. So this one here is still in part zero, as you can see, there's no part given in this uh, information. So we use the up key here and go part one. So now we don't see bonds, now I can zoom by pressing the Alt key and uh, the mouse. So this would be part one and this would be part two. And if you look at here, it says it's linked with free variable two. So what we need to do in order to honor that is click on both of those. And this would be FR21. So we're choosing the free variable two and it's the first part. And this one would be FR minus 21, which means it's coupled to the first, the same free variable, but it's one minus that value. We could have also done this differently. We could have taken this and type part 121, which is just a shortcut <coughs> of saying the same thing. And of course, uh, this one, the same up key, part 2 and minus 21. Now, if we refine this, we will see what happens. Well, it actually refines stably. The R factor is, is uh, not good, but we're also missing the hydrogens. And we can see the hydrogens are coming up here. So refine this again. And this is not looking too badly. The uh, is, is about 90%. And we can add the hydrogens to this. So we can try it, just selecting all of those and typing H add. And it has done the right thing. It uh, selected, uh, it, 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 it figured out that there are CH2s and all of those. If I refine this, then let's see what happens. And this gives a stable refinement and the R factor has dropped quite dramatically to 3.95%. Now, 
The ADPs don't look entirely reasonable here, but then don't forget this is only 10% of a carbon now. So let's make this one anisotropic as well. We can select it and then click on this. That makes it anisotropic. And because this box is ticked, it straight away refines. And they don't look particularly, uh, you know, good. But then again, as I said before, this is only 10, 11% of a carbon. So we can now be, be in Odex to refine, Levenberg Marquardt, uh, make it a few more cycles and refine that and see uh, what happens. So this is all moving and now it's moving away a little bit. So we probably will need some restraints here. So one restraint we can use is we click on this, this, this and this and we can use, I haven't clicked on this, it doesn't matter really here and we can use the Rigu restraint, make it fairly strong and see how that comes out and now the rigid group is, is sort of on it, 3.91, 3.93 so the R factor hasn't really changed too much. I don't think we need any restraints on that because these are quite uh, happy, happy uh, here. That is no, no, no problem. Now these peaks are now all on the bonds and control M looking at the map. There's also really very few residuals now. It's at the current level. I can I can move this with shift on the left mouse is 0 0.258. So there's very little residual. So this is actually a um, you know it's 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 a, a, a valid model and it's still not settled. So let's refine this a few more times and um, see whether it settles and it settles completely. We might want to look at the I over sigma plot. That's always an important thing. We should have done this first. And what we see is. It's nice and strong all the way out to 60 degrees, so there is no reason to cut any data here because that's all good data, valid data. Let's have a quick check at outliers. It's the um, the plot of the um, F ops versus F calc, and with a bit of imagination, this is maybe curved this way, so there might be a little bit of extinction. So we tick this box, um, hit refine again, and see whether we get a value that makes sense. Um, well, it doesn't really make sense. The R factor has gone down a little bit and this looks a bit straighter. So possibly we want to re the extinction refined even though it's it's borderline whether this is uh, valid, but certainly the R factor has gone down. Quick look at the um, bad reflection. So there's anything listed here and there's nothing coming out as being particularly bad. So this is um, a type clear to clear the background. So this is an alternative model and I actually now believe this is the correct model. Um, for this particular disorder and um, we have got it wrong in the past. That's uh, quite simple and that's it.